components of Indian money market. The components of the Indian money market were in first institution, namely the central bank, RBI, we have already taken. Ready? Upper number one is RBI, which we have already done. <coughs> RBI as a central bank, <coughs> what are the functions of the Reserve Bank of India and the details with regard to the Reserve Bank of India we have already done. So going to the second, number two, second component namely commercial banks, commercial banks, just a quick go through with regard to the commercial banks, various types of commercial banks in India. <coughs> You know, the commercial banks, the entire commercial banks of the Indian money market, we can broadly classify into either, we may say, public sector commercial bank, public sector commercial bank, as well as private sector, private sector, public sector and private sector commercial bank, one method of classification. Or, we may have another classification as uh, scheduled commercial banks as well as uh, non-scheduled commercial banks. Scheduled as well as non-scheduled commercial bank on the one or public sector and the private sector commercial bank on the other. In both the way, we can classify the different types of commercial banks existing in the Indian money market. For example, if you take a public sector commercial bank as well as the private commercial bank, government sector that means nationalized commercial bank. We, yes. we mean the nationalized commercial banks which are owned and operated by the government, central government uh, ownership as well as the uh, working under the government sector. Uh, such types of public sector commercial bank on the one hand and at the very same time there are also certain private sector owned and operated by the private shareholders. Private shareholders uh, uh, bank on the other. So that is one method by which we can classify nationalized commercial bank or public sector commercial bank on the one side as well as the private shareholding banks on the other. One method. Or we may say scheduled and non-scheduled commercial banks. Scheduled commercial bank means those commercial banks which are included under the second schedule of the Reserve Bank of India Act. Those commercial banks which are included under the second schedule of the Reserve Bank of India Act is what is known as scheduled commercial bank. And if it is not included under the second schedule, we call it as a non-scheduled commercial bank. For those commercial banks which are included under the second schedule of the Reserve Bank of India Act is known as the scheduled commercial bank. And if it is not included, we call it as non-scheduled commercial banks. You know, if a commercial bank is a scheduled commercial bank, RBI is benefited. RBI, Reserve Bank of India is benefited if there are only scheduled commercial bank working in the country. Why? Because RBI want to properly control the complete banking system of the economy. RBI is a regulator and controller. And so if the Reserve Bank of India wants to regulate and control the commercial banks, definitely minimum it should be a scheduled commercial bank. As it is included under the second schedule and it can be under the purview and the regulation and control of the reserve bank only if it is minimum a scheduled commercial bank. RB is benefited because one of the most important function of the reserve bank of India is regulating and controlling all the commercial banks in the economy. And so also uh, the RBI is functioning as the apex organization in the money market. As it is a regulator as well as the apex organization in the money market, definitely if 
a scheduled bank is there rbi is easily regulating possible and the regulation control everything is possible only if it is a minimum scheduled bank in the country ab rbi is a beneficiary if almost all commercial banks are under second schedule of the reserve bank of india and at the very same time the bank is also benefited scheduled banks are also beneficiary on what way we say that it is a beneficiary scheduled banks are also benefited because rbi will lend assistance financial assistance loans and advances only to minimum a scheduled bank if it is a scheduled bank uh, the commercial bank will be getting easily loan and advances from the reserve bank of india but being a scheduled bank both the parties are satisfied both the parties are beneficiary rbi is benefited because rbi can regulate and control the commercial bank commercial bank is also benefited because it is easy to get a loan and advance to the commercial bank only if minimum it is a scheduled bank therefore the conditions for inclusion of a commercial bank under the second schedule is very simple a very simple three conditions alone need be satisfied by a commercial bank for inclusion in the second schedule and for a second scheduled commercial bank status for a scheduled commercial bank status to include in the second schedule very little very minimum very simple three conditions alone need be satisfied number one condition number one is that it should have a minimum paid up capital of rupees 5 lakhs 5 lakhs minimum paid up capital required for inclusion of a commercial bank under the scheduled bank status only 5 lakhs is it is a uh, boy it is fixed uh, years back even today 5 lakhs rupees minimum paid up capital required for the inclusion of a bank under the second schedule so every commercial bank all commercial bank may have more than this 5 lakhs of rupees there will be no such a problem to any commercial bank for want of excess uh, paid up capital uh, not getting the status of scheduled bank there may not be such a problem all of them all commercial bank may have even more than 5 lakhs rupees as the paid up capital so that there will be no difficulty no difficulty with regard to the paid up capital as a requirement for the second scheduled status number 2 secondly the work of the commercial bank the commercial bank must work for the utmost satisfaction of the customers customers in the rest protect the customers in us that should be the objective of a commercial bank in no way commercial bank uh, may say uh, harmful and uh, acting against the interest of the customers protect the customers in us what do you mean by customers in us customers we want to withdraw money whenever we want there should be provision and easily withdrawable by means of check and so also uh, we should also get loans and advances when we are getting easy loans and advances from the commercial bank if possible at a lower rate of interest and if we can withdraw our deposit without much delay and um, miss a difficulty commercial bank working properly at most satisfaction of the customers is possible that means the reserve bank of india should have no such a complaint complained with regard to the working of a commercial bank the commercial bank is protecting the interest of the uh, customers customers interest that means uh, they are easily possible to withdraw their deposit without any delay they are also getting loans and advances as they require at a concessional or lower rate of interest the work is satisfied so commercial bank must protect and work for uh, the protection of the interest of the customers there shall be no complaint on the part of the customers with regard to the working of the commercial bank that is second condition 
and the third condition number 3 third condition is that it should be a company type of organization it should be a company type of organization registered under the companies act of india on basis of the companies act of india or um, it should be a registered organization working on basis of the companies act and provisions on the basis of the companies act of india if it is working established in the economy it can be second schedule status easily obtained <coughs> or you see that <coughs> it should be a company type of organization third condition right a commercial bank to get the scheduled bank status third condition is that it should be a company type of organization you know we have a number of cooperative banks in india cooperative banks are established not based on the companies act of india we know that cooperative banks are established on basis of the cooperative societies act and rule of the concerned state for example in case of kerala kerala cooperative societies act and rule 1969 based on which the cooperative banks are established cooperative banks are also a component they are also similar to the commercial bank working in the economy so cooperative banks can never satisfy condition number 3 cooperative banks cannot satisfy the third condition because the third condition is that it should be established on basis of the companies act of india as cooperative banks are not based on the companies act of india and it is established on basis of the cooperative societies act and rules uh, it is not possible it is not possible to satisfy the third condition therefore the third condition is exempted to cooperative banks that means cooperative banks can also be a scheduled bank it can also get a scheduled bank status provided the other two conditions are satisfied as it cannot as it cannot satisfy the third condition it is exempted it is exempted from the third condition and if the other two conditions are satisfied even a cooperative bank can be allowed the scheduled bank status you see that today almost all commercial banks parking in the indian money market are scheduled commercial either a private bank or a public bank public sector or private sector bank or it can be considered as a scheduled bank or non scheduled bank above that is the classification public sector or private sector scheduled or non scheduled bank a classification of the commercial banks now we may take what are the most important commercial banks a group by group way we can take but one of the commercial bank is having a higher status among the commercial bank among the commercial bank one commercial bank is having some head weight and that is state bank of india sbi so we may take sbi separately state bank of india separately we are taking though it is what though it is a public sector commercial bank similar to other public sector commercial bank it is also one of the public sector commercial bank but as it is having some superiority some um, higher status we find separately the state bank of india you know during the british period prior to the establishment of the reserve bank of india during the british period the british government transaction was being done by three regional presidency banks three regional presidency banks were in india doing government transaction in the absence of a central bank reserve bank of india at that time three regional presidency banks were working in india for example southern region southern region headquarters is madras madras regional presidency bank for the southern region central region bombay regional presidency bank for the central northern bengal 
presidency bank of bengal for the northern bridge actually these three banks were doing government transaction uh, during the british period also and these three banks were private uh, they were private banks they were private banks existing in the indian economy but doing government transaction government accounts also uh, maintained uh, through this three regional presidency banks all these three regional presidency banks were also integrated merged by the british government in the year 1921 in the year 1921 these three regional presidency banks were merged by the british government and named as imperial bank of india imperial bank of india so imperial bank of india was established by merging the three regional presidency banks in 1921 and after merger also the imperial bank of india was allowed to do government transaction as they were doing prior to the amalgamation as they were doing prior to the amalgamation government transaction the very same thing allowed even after the merger of the three regional presidency banks the very same transaction of government account and government uh, mr dealings permitted to carry on by the imperial bank of india from 1921 onwards then after our independence after our independence the reserve bank of india uh, by that time reserve bank of india already established right? rbi as well as the government of india together appointed uh, what is called rural credit survey committee rural credit survey committee was appointed by the reserve bank of india and the central government together to study about the rural credit facilities available in the indian economy rural credit facility what are the rural credit facilities available in the indian economy is the facilities are sufficient to make recommendations to study about this problem and to make uh, any improvement if necessary the committee was appointed in which year 1955 in the year 1955 